not bad. Not bad at all. Now surprisingly, this awesome case comes with all the cyberboards, at least on the Indiegogo run, uh, which seems to be sold out, so yeah, sorry, but it did sell out pretty quick, and I can definitely see why, because look at this thing. What a monster. It's inspired by the Tesla Cybertruck, and they came up with this super unique looking board, and as someone who's played around with a bunch, it's always really cool to see something different. Especially this bit, with them calling it the first custom LED mechanical keyboard. Let's take the board apart to have a closer look. This plastic bit is actually just held in by magnets, so you can use the included suction thingo to pull it out. Oh, and we got keys for the case. Pretty neat. And a bunch of Allen keys with this curvy boy. And to actually build this thing, you do have to take it apart, which isn't the most straightforward process. And to add to that, this is just the board, so you do need to supply your own switches and stabilizers. It's not 100% necessary, but it makes it easier. There's two ribbon cables, one that connects to the USB daughter board, and another to the LED section. And a third cable that looks to be like a Bluetooth extension thing. I don't know, let me know if you do. And the PCB and plate just pop out. Let's have a quick look at the LED section, and you wouldn't need to touch this when building, so don't worry about that. But there's a metal grid that separates the LEDs, and then I counted 200 SMD LEDs, I think. Check out this chunky piece though. It is a top mount design, so the plate screws into the top piece. Nice custom feet too, by the way, which are pretty low profile. Now to the bottom piece. We have two solid 4000 milliamp hour batteries totaling at 8000. In comparison, an Anpro 2 has a 1900 milliamp hour battery, but we definitely do need that extra power. And yeah, let's just get to it. This is a prototype unit, so not the final. And this internal dampener, yeah, it's a straight up copy of the Ramo X1, no way around it. In fact, let's compare them. Obviously different size and thickness, but yeah, they're the same. Even the pattern is exactly the same. They did say they were heavily influenced by Rumbleworks design, and I think you can even see that with other aspects of the package as well. And since they got called out, they did apologize and change the design to this. Not cool, but that's that. And at the very bottom, here is where they'll have the wireless charging stuff. I don't have it on mine, but that's pretty crazy. They show it working on a wireless charging mat, which is sweet as. Personally, I'm a huge fan of wireless peripherals. I use a wireless mouse and most of the time a, a wireless keyboard. So just imagine having a desk pad that charges both your mouse and keyboard. Like how cool will that be? No matter how many years it'll take off your life. Moving on, we gotta take the PCB and plate apart in order to install the stabilizers. Basically, you gotta take this board apart just for the stabilizers, all for the stabs. In the middle, we do have this silicone mute piece, again, called mute, and this fills up the space in between, which is pretty cool. You could also remove this if you wanted to, as it doesn't interact with the rest of the case. The plate is made from 1.5mm aluminium and is also available in other colours. Quite simple, we have the mounting points around the edge and a few relief cuts between the main area and the function row, uh, but I guess it's more for positioning the silicone piece. Oh, and there are these flat, somewhat thin o-rings for the mounts. And finally, the PCB. We have a button battery down here, so that's quite a lot packed in here. I wonder how easy this thing will be to ship, I don't know. Uh, it features kale hot swap sockets, so no soldering required. And therefore, it has a completely fixed design, so no customizability and no ISO, sorry. Okay, so now at this point, we can start building it. You will need three two-unit stabilizers and a 6.25U stab. And as always, make sure you loop them.
The ribbon cables may be a little difficult for those who haven't come across them before. It's a little difficult to show, but you need to have the port open and then slide the cable into place as far as possible and then close it. I got a bunch of Gatoron yellows from my mate Hong Hobbies here in Australia, which he lubed up. Big thanks, buddy. I'll chuck a link in the description for his building and lubing services, but I did end up changing them in the end. I'll save them for another build, but I switched over to our packets. And yeah, hot swap is awesome. Super easy. Just make sure the pins are straight when you push them in. And if a key doesn't work, it's most likely a bent pin. And done. I actually am really digging this look. It's just so different. Just the shape of it, very angular, sharp, straight lines. Just like the Cybertruck I mentioned before. But it's still clean looking, nothing too, too crazy. Especially when you just have it in front of you. While it really holds a presence on your desk, it's not wacky. It looks and feels like a slab, and in front of me, it looks quite low and even flat, even though it does have a 10 degree typing angle and is pretty tall. But because of its large sloping down forehead and very low profile feet, like look, there's hardly any gap between the board and the table, it, it just feels good. Honestly, in the renders, I thought it all looked a bit much, but personally, I feel this is a case of a board looking better in person. We do have a 75% layout. The function row is separated, which I like. Just gives us a bit of breathing space and makes it a little easier to navigate with that separation. They've also opted for a blocker here and here, which again clusters off the arrow keys, which is nice. It has a very basic bottom row with 1.25U keys and a 6.25U spacebar, so all easy peasy. So I like the layout. Basically a slightly more compact tank keyless, so we get everything besides the numpad. Now let's get to them LEDs, hey? Definitely its defining feature, this array of 200 LEDs. Right now the configurator is not available, so unfortunately I can't muck around with that, but look how cool this is. For sure people will say what's the point, uh, but when you're dealing with these high-end boards, sense kind of goes out the window to be honest, it's just an extra novelty thing that makes it unique. At a normal sitting position, you can actually get a very decent view, like looking at the time, it's fully legible and easy to read, and yeah, it's actually quite visible. I seriously love it, and I can't wait to be able to configure it. Another big feature is that it has Bluetooth 5.0. I believe this window on the rear allows that signal to transmit out, and there's a switch on the bottom. It's really cool how it shows the Bluetooth profile that you're on, in which there are three, so you can connect to other devices as well. Bluetooth performance felt good, a tiny bit of latency from my tests, but very similar to wired mode, so no real issues for me. Let's have a quick listen. The board feels great. It's not too hard, and I think the silicone piece between the plate and the PCB plays a part in that, and also just the solidity of the board gives it that depth with so much underneath it, so it's quite tight and dense feeling without much vibration at all, but again not too hard of a bottom out. Uh, definitely the sort of feel that I think a lot of people will like. 
And that goes for the sound as well. It doesn't spill out onto the table, it's quite self-contained which I like. And with the dampening internals, everything is slightly muted to give that thocky sound, kind of low pitched, even with my light lube job. There is a bit of a metallic ping around the edges, more of the right side keys. Uh, in particular, I found just hitting the enter key normally produced a bit of ping, but for the rest of them, you gotta hit them pretty hard to get that ping, so absolutely fine for me. But overall, I think the board feels awesome. And that's the cyberboard. Honestly, amazing. For me, it's just great to see something different, something other than the norm. And no doubt there's those who will just laugh this off because it veers from general consensus, but that's why I love it. It's fun, it's a little out there, but with all these crazy bits put together, it works and the execution was there. Although there is that shifty stuff with the Rama design pools and that sort of stuff isn't on, so they better learn from that. Again, these sold out pretty quick on their Indiegogo campaign, which I'll link. And I'll also link their Instagram if you want to keep an eye out. Anyway, maybe I can use this board for another project, not sure, but stay tuned.